we're, um, we're going to Battery Oldenburg. Uh, it's just outside of the old refugee camp. Everything's deserted, even the, the there's a building over here, like a, a refugee building, I think, where they sort of got other medicines and stuff like that. Uh, and that's deserted as well because obviously the camp's closed down. Now, the only way I can see to get round to back of this, to this bunker place, see, see it there, there's two of them, two big casemates, is um, go this way, which is through it, yeah? The old place, it's just there, but there's a wall there. I need to get through the other side of rounds. And anyway, I said a gap that's been broken into. The gates have got here anyway, so. We may park the old park here, I don't know. Anyway, I parked down there on the corner of the old um, refugee camp, and we'll go this way. Well, we've come to one case, mate, here, with the uh, metal camouflaged Ooh. stuff on it. <coughs> wow, these bunkers are huge. These casemates were built in 1940 by organisation TUD to support the Operation Sea Lion, the uh, invasion of England. The two large casemates measure 35 metres long and 50 metres high. They had two 240mm captured World War I Russian guns. The guns were rechambered by Krupp Company to take 255mm shells. However, they still could not reach the south coast of England. Both casemates are slightly offset for better fire coverage of the English Channel. There's also a couple of 621 and 629 casemates, personal casemates here. I think we've just walked over one of them. It's three quarters buried. Yeah, this looks like uh, one of the personnel bunkers. Yeah, and it's all sealed up as well. Big bunkers like this, um, big strong points, tend to have a lot of other stuff going on with them, especially these size here. Uh, they'll have hospital, toilets, obviously sanitary. They'll have machine gun nests. Um, they'll have flat towers, searchlights. There's all sorts of things that'll, uh, that'll have here. Still time to stand the test of time, but there's a big crack in that one. At least there's probably the foundations giving way. But it's not on the beach, so it'll um, it'll last a bit longer. There's some um, ventilation shafts there. I'm not sure what that is yet. It could be actually. To be honest with you, I'm not sure unless it's like some kind of drain for the roof. So how are these bunkers built? Well, in order to get um, the Atlantic Wall up and running, you had to have some kind of standard design, so the, uh, the, the German government, I'm assuming, or organisation taught, came up with a, an idea of what they call Regal Bow, which is standard design. Uh, the only thing with the standard design is it had over 700 in its catalogue. <laughs> it's a heck of a lot, so this is a case, mate, I'm not sure where it is, I'll have a look in a minute and I'll, and I'll obviously let you know. This was a, one of the biggest ones I've seen. It's absolutely huge. What are they put together? <coughs> well, what they do is they basically make a trellis frame, metal frame. And then what they do then is they'd make shuttering around it, usually timber. You can tell the shuttering because you can actually see the shuttering lines here on these here. That's usually the timber, plenty of timber and plenty of spragging. What they do then is they get a, a mix of um, concrete, which is sand, cement, chippings, and water, pour it in. But what would make it super strong is they would use some kind of vibrating machine. 
And as they put, put the concrete in, <coughs> as they put the concrete in, they would put these big rods in and it would vibrate and it would aggregate all the actual uh, sand and cement and, uh, and chippings and it would get rid of out all the bubbles. And you can tell that because there's no basic bubbles on that side, there's no bubbles there. So you know that they've done some kind of vibrate on that. And what it does then is it consolidates everything, so it's going to consolidate the, um, the sand and cement and chippings, mortar, the renders, oh, sorry, the sand and cement and chippings, which is the, um, the concrete. And it would also bind tighter and be more solid on the phone, on the structure itself. And that's a reason this has become super strong. This is over 70 years old. And to be quite honest with you, yeah, you're gonna get cracks in obviously because it'll expand and contract with the weather. But generally, these bunkers are in really, really good condition for the rage. Oh, and by the way, they still use that type of system now in concrete, in foundations and stuff like that. And I've done them a couple, done them a couple of times in that sort of job. But yeah, they'll, uh, they still use that sort of um, technique in when they put in foundations in properties and stuff like that. Well, they've still got the old basin where the gun was. There's the sides. And there's the top. This is an unusual sort of metal. Normally they're usually concrete, them, them things there, but it must, the gun must be that big. It needed something to support the top of it and the bottom of it. Why it turned and fired on the... Uh, on the channel. And then holes at back there, besides ventilation, they're called overpressure valves or overpressure vents. And I think the idea is, is when the, uh, when the gun's fired, there's that much pressure, back pressure, it needs to go somewhere. Now, obviously you don't want it to go into any of your soldiers. So it has to be released somewhere. It, it would have been released through these holes here. I would assume anyway. Yeah, subterranean building. Can't get into it. They, they bricked it up, but they knocked it partly down. And uh, also lot, lots of stuff sitting down there, but I'm not going anywhere. Um, this big concrete base may have been for uh, obviously to give it some protection against you know enemy fire and stuff like that and that's how the circle looked like that as well see how the circle like that that stop um, that stop any shells or fragments hitting and bouncing back in so the idea is, is it hits it and it should bounce out really uh, but some of these especially when they're built on sand they come right out and the idea is is when the gun's fired uh, there's a lot of dust and it blows up and what he's trying to do, he's trying to stop it from blowing up and going into the actual gun mechanism and, and destroying it, basically. Possibly an overpressure valve or a vent. Okay, let's have a look at what these babies look like from the uh, 